What's happening, Polite Society? I hope you're having a good week. Today, we're going to be looking at a tweet by actor Jonathan Rumi. So let's delve in. Hello, everyone. If you're here for the first time, welcome to my channel. I'm Alan. The content and analysis in this video presentation is courtesy of my friend Andreas. So I am indebted to him for his work on this subject. In a recent controversial tweet, Jonathan Rumi, the star of the Chosen TV series, wrote, Visiting St. Padre Pio, one of the most powerful saints and witnesses to the sufferings and the miracles of Christ in the 20th century, as well as one with whom I've had personal interactions. Also the first priest on record to have the stigmata, physically documented. You can see a picture of Rumi here holding his hand against the glass box of the deceased Roman Catholic saint just mentioned. Padre Pio was an Italian friar, priest, stigmatist, and mystic, now venerated by the Catholic Church. Rumi who portrays Christ in the popular TV series The Chosen, self-identifies as a devout Roman Catholic. He not only feels inspired by Pope Francis, but also regularly prays the rosary on live streams and while filming. It is not fully clear, however, what Rumi means when he tweets to have had personal interactions with Padre Pio. Padre Pio died six years before Rumi was born. From that, one must conclude that Rumi claims a spiritual connection to the deceased. The evangelical director, Dallas Jenkins, however, does not seem to be concerned about these things, since he admits even having Latter-day Saints involved in the production of The Chosen. In an LDS podcast, Jenkins stated that Latter-day Saints and evangelicals love the same Jesus. But why should we be concerned about Rumi's veneration of saints? Roman Catholics themselves do not like to be accused of worshipping idols. They see a distinction between the veneration of saints and the worship of God. As a result of this distinction, in their minds, it is not idolatrous to venerate Mary and the saints. However, this narrow definition of idolatry is not biblical. The second commandment prohibits the worship of idols. Exodus 25 says, You shall not worship them or serve them. The Hebrew word for worship is shaka. According to the Hebrew lexicon Brown, Driver, and Briggs, it includes the broader idea of bowing down or prostrating oneself. Therefore, we must conclude that Roman Catholics do in fact break the second commandment. Centuries ago, the great magisterial reformer John Calvin already noticed the distinction of what is called dulia, veneration of saints, and latria, worship of God, was invented for the very purpose of permitting divine honors to be paid to angels and dead men with apparent impunity. Moreover, the Bible condemns speaking with the dead. This is all the more concerning when thinking about the fact that Jonathan Rumi is not just playing any biblical figure, but Christ himself. So let's be in prayer for Jonathan Rumi and others who believe in the false gospel of Rome. Let's pray that the Spirit will work in their hearts so that they will embrace the true Jesus as he is freely offered in the true gospel. Also, be sure to check out Andreas' latest video in which he responds to Stephen Furtick's controversial statement, I am God Almighty. I've posted a link below. And ladies and gents, if you want to share your own thoughts, be sure to do so in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching, guys. If you liked that video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like the content here, you can subscribe by clicking on the icon on the bottom right. Then you can hit the bell for notifications. I upload a new video every Wednesday and every Saturday. You can also follow me on Instagram. I posted a link below. Have an awesome rest of your week. And for my brothers and sisters in the Lord, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all always. I will see you all in the next video. God's blessings on your week.